how's it going everybody so today i want to show you a very peculiar sea urchin and let's first check out this little skeleton shrimp in front of it and that's almost acting like one of these misguided climate protesters in europe so the sea urchin being the truck which the climate protester is holding up. Now, of course, neither that amphipod skeleton shrimp nor the climate protesters will change climate change or, you know, climate policy. But I think it's funny how that urchin is in held up by a little shrimp. Now, this is a individual of Maretia planolata, thanks to Christopher Ma for the ID. And this is one of these hard urchins. So very often they're dug in. Now what you can see here, that it, it's missing a significant chunk of its body. You can see that on the bottom. And then I think that probably a fish took a bite. And the urchin still persists. It's still moving about. It's still crawling through the sand. So this is almost like the Black Knight in that Monty Python movie where they're having this duel in the forest and then the black knight loses all limbs and then it suggests hey let's call it a draw right and so these urchins are extremely good in tolerating damage and i actually wrote a paper a few years ago suggesting to use these features of echinoderms as inspiration for robotic designs and uh, because there is such a graceful degradation that when the animal is severely damaged, it's still functioning. So this is because of the highly decentralized nature of the skeleton, of the nervous system and of the locomotory system of these animals. Now, here you see that gash again. And if you look a little bit closer, you can look inside and really the animal has been totally eviscerated by i assume that fish so you know i doubt that this animal will continue feeding or, and will reproduce but you know the spines which are really also locomotor organs in this animals they, they continue moving so there is an amazing uh, animal really active here which you know has has an extreme tolerance for damage so you know in a human you essentially just need a deep cut in a bad uh, spot and you will bleed to death uh, within minutes whereas with these urchins they can be missing a big part of their body and they are still crawling along so evolution took a very different path with these echinoderms than with humans so we can reflect on evolution as well when we're looking at the sepia. So this is, of course, a cuttlefish. It's a cephalopod. This, of course, is a mollusk. I made a, an overview video. I'm linking to that over all of the cephalopods. And this is very different from us, but in many ways very similar. So we and them split very early in evolution nevertheless they uh, kind of converge to a very similar point so this is a hunter this is a animal with keen senses with a large brain and which can move very swiftly and in a very coordinated manner so this in a sense is as distantly related as the echinoderms from us even more actually but in the, it's uh, found a similar solution to the same problem so really this animal you know the cephalopods as a whole have been called honorary vertebrates because you know they really act more like vertebrates than a sea slug or a clam which are other mollusks so fascinating stuff to see underwater if you know where to look and if you use your you know evolutionary biology background now here we have a map puffer you can see that during last week's dives, the visibility sometimes was not very good. And so there's a lot of suspended matter in the water. Now, I saw this puffer and I saw another puffer, which is a spotted puffer. And this puffer is with a shark sucker, which is a type of remora. So this is a hitchhiker. And 
you know, without asking for permission. So these fish, these remoras, usually suck up onto whale sharks, manta rays, other large sharks, or even whales or turtles. But a lot of this megafauna is missing in the Philippines because a lot of the places are, you know, terribly overfished, really. So these very large marine animals have been eliminated. Now, the shark suckers are still around and they have to find an alternative. So I've observed this several times now that the shark suckers are sucking up onto, you know, mid-sized fishes like this pufferfish. So this pufferfish is about the size of a volleyball and it's, you know, from its body language, I'm guessing that it's not particularly happy to be with that shark sucker and, you know, nevertheless, it can't get rid of it and the shark sucker doesn't have a better option. This is my friend Matt, uh, who is, you know, a frequent dive buddy of mine, all of these exploratory dives. So here, what do we have here? Something else altogether. So these are the striped eel catfish and they show intelligence in a swarm. Swarm intelligence. You, unless they're very large adults, you never see them alone. So they're always in these very dense schools. So the functioning of these schools is really quite different from a regular fish school where all fish are aligned and, you know, pointing in the same direction. They're more forming this pile and, you know, they're going in different directions and they're, they're, active in digging up edibles from the sand and there seems to be some odd voting you know which direction they're gonna go so they always stick together while at the same time different individuals in different parts of this pile explore different corners of the environment so one thing you might ask when looking at this footage now is why is it in black and white and the reason is that the visibility was not very good and there was not a lot of nice light. So it then looks at artsy and it looks better to make things uh, black and white if your colors are not very nice. Uh, this is my friend Scott and he looks as if he's a part of the catfish school, but in fact he's not. And that would not be a good idea because these catfish are in fact venomous. They can sting you and I'm using this Enon back eye close focus wide angle lens to film them. So more catfish here. There's a tire. I believe this was probably sank on purpose to create an artificial reef. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if that's a great idea, but you know, fish like these catfish really actually really are drawn to these artificial structures which are found in many parts of the ocean these days. So here you have it. This is a very cool kind of behavior. Um, you know, they make decisions as a school. Finally, you know, uh, there's a little clip at the end of today's video, which is a octocoral, a soft coral, swaying back and forth in the sand. This is something you can use to take a deep breath, relax at the beginning of your day. And I hope you enjoyed today's video and see you again soon.